Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, I'm going to start my day by talking about a fight I was dead wrong about. I didn't see this one coming. Now, I've placed the video of the fight. It's Joe Shiming's first loss of his pro career, right, to champion Amnat Ruenrong. I've placed the video of this fight in my favorites folder, right? A word of advice. You might want to download this video sooner rather than later because sometimes these videos appear on the internet and then, of course, they get removed, right? So, take a look at that fight film. It's riveting. Now, let me tell you what I expected. Where I was wrong. Shiming is Chinese. In fact, he's a two-time Olympic gold medalist. He received a big contract to turn pro. The fight was taking place in Macau, China. Right? Against a guy who's not Chinese. Ren Rong is, I believe he's from Thailand. He's not from China. Right? So the crowd's going to be a heavily Shiming crowd, I thought. Right? And I thought Shiming would realize that he's facing a guy who only has five KOs. Let me repeat that. Ruen Rong only has five KOs for his career. So I thought Shiming would understand the moment. Right? Let's get outside the ring for a second and just understand that a fighter needs to at least be aware of the public mood. I thought Shiming would be aware of the public mood. The public has come to see him against a foreign fighter who lacks power. I thought at a minimum Shiming would come in and try to be aggressive early. Set the tone. You know the playing field's unlevel already. You know the other guy's not going to KO you with one punch. Why wouldn't Shemaine come out against a light-hitting champion and try to throw some big punches, try to let the crowd know? I appreciate your support, right? Try to let everyone understand. He's fighting a champion who's tailor-made for him. In other words, Shiming is 33. Ruen Rong is 35. Shiming's the younger guy in the fight. Right? Ruen Rong lacks power. So you would think Shiming would come in and at least try to have the kind of first round where the crowd knows... If he's going to lose this fight, it's not going to be from lack of effort, right? He's here to take the title, not be awarded the title, right? Show the fans something, have them yelling for you, and then have the judges intimidated by the crowd noise or perhaps persuaded by the crowd noise, right? There are times where, quite frankly, a fighter needs to be so in tune with public sentiment that he comes out and even throws some wild punches that he knows are going to miss. Just to let everyone in the arena understand, hey, he's going for it. Now, to my utter amazement, and keep in mind, I just assume that Shiming was a guy who had been on the world stage, at least as an amateur, long enough to understand boxing politics. To my utter amazement, Shemaine comes out tentatively in the first round. It's a shocker. He's not on his front foot. He's not acknowledging the fans. He's on his back foot. Worse yet, he's so far away from Nguyen Rong that when he's throwing jabs, he can't even land the jab. I'm not kidding. Right? He's tentative. It's as if he's intimidated by the crowd. 
It was shocking. There's no flavor. He's not playing to the crowd. He's not waving at the crowd. You want to know the guy who's showing the flavor? And it's a bit shocking. It's his opponent, who's not even from the country. Right? The champ, actually, after starting with his hands up, starts to drop his right hand. Right? There's a charisma gap in this fight. The visitor has charisma. Right? Not the local fighter. So you see Ruen Rong, he has a left hand up. Right? But you'll notice he's dropping his hand. He's dropping the other hand. You can tell he's figured out that he's not going to be subject to any quick strikes by Zhou Shiming. He's figured out that Shiming is too tentative, doesn't have what I call ring power. In other words, when he's far away, he can't deliver punches with bad intentions that actually land on a guy far away from him. Right? This is a reverse David Hay. You're watching the fight and you're consciously thinking, Zhou Shiming is too far away to land any power shots. Right? He's tentative. He doesn't let his hands go. Inexplicably, the announcers during this fight talk about Zhou Shiming's combination punching ability. Folks, that's missing in the first round. Right? So, Shiming shows up to what should be a coronation for him. Right? This is like Prince Charles showing up for his wedding against Princess Diana. And he's not prepared. He's not playing it up. He's not acknowledging that he's British. That he's marrying a beautiful woman. That people are watching him. He's not putting on any semblance of a show. It's stunning. Right? Well, let me say this. We get to the second round. Now think about this. Ruen Rong is so confident, he actually starts landing jabs to the body. He's countering Shiming. Shiming throws jabs that come short. Shiming tries to throw punches that are short. Ruen Rong then, while Shiming is still extended, is able to sidestep the punch and land on it. So then Ruen Rong starts throwing jabs to the body. I'm telling you that that's when you know a fighter has completely figured out the timing of his opponent. Because understand, if I'm like this and I throw a jab to the body and I'm leaned down, I'm open all here. Right? That jab to the body could cost you. Just like it costs. Razor Ruddick against Lennox Lewis. Right? If a guy knows you're going to be trying to jab to his body, he's going to set it up so when you lean forward and stick your hand here, he's hitting you with something. Could be an uppercut. Could be a punch on this side. Right? He understands. Your hand's extended. You're naked on this side. Right? By the way, I knew Mayweather owned Canelo when I saw him jabbing Canelo's body. Same type thing. Right? Well, Ruen Rong is even getting off jabs to the body. So then, lightning strikes. Shiming gets lucky. He throws a very tepid left hand. Ruen Rong gets tangled up with his feet gets hit by the punch, the punch is just enough to have him fall over the other guy's leg and hit the canvas, right? It's kind of like a Sergio Martinez knockdown, right? Where Martinez has his feet tangled up and hits the canvas but isn't really hurt. The point I want to make to you, and I'm going to disagree with the critics here online, I believe that is a knockdown, right? Understand, if I land any punch, and that punch contributes to you falling down, in my opinion, that's a knockdown. I don't believe Ruen Rong hits the canvas, apart from Shiming landing the punch. Right? So understand, you have a Chinese crowd, you have a Chinese two-time gold medalist. He's trying to win his first professional title. He drops the champ in the second round. Now, could you imagine 
that if this fighter were someone charismatic, let's say Hector Camacho, let's say Ray Robinson, right? Let's say Manny Pacquiao, right? If, if they're fighting Ray Leonard, they're fighting in front of their fans and they drop the champ in the second round. Could you imagine what would happen next? Champ gets up, they'd be on the champ, they'd be waving to the crowd, they'd be putting on a show. You would know, I came here to see Manny Pacquiao win a title and he's going after it. That's not this fight, folks. Right? Joe Shemaine acts like it's a slip. Right? He does nothing to raise the room temperature. It's as if he was on a mission to try to bore or disenfranchise the fans who came to see him. It's startling. So then we get to round three. Now here's where it gets really interesting. I don't want to get too deep, but understand, there's a whole part of boxing that doesn't involve anything legal. Right? Uh, in other words, things happen in my opinion, by design to some extent, that a group of fighters know they can help happen, right? Let's say Bernard Hopkins, for example, hypothetically, of course, right? And the fans don't realize that the injuries are major. So, right? There's a moment in the third round where the two guys come together and butt heads. I'm telling you that your body doesn't know. When your body's been hit by something hard, it doesn't know whether it's a punch or whether it's a head clash, right? We, the fans watching it, say, okay, that's not, you know, that's not a uh, punch. Uh, let's just move to the next scene. Uh, this guy couldn't be hurt. That can't count in the scoring. You and I know that's not the way the human body works. These guys clash heads in the third round. I'm telling you that that might as well have been a knockdown of Joe Shaming. Shaming is so dazed and confused. Now, I know these boxers look like poker players, right? These are the kind of guys who could be in car crashes, and then they act like, hey, it didn't hurt me. You know, these are the guys who... You know, you're talking to them, the guy looks good, and then you say, where are you, and the guy has no idea. They have a clash of heads in the third round, right? Doesn't impact Ruen wrong that much. He actually puts his hand up by his head to make sure he's not cut. Shiming, by contrast, is so dazed and confused that at the end of the round, he goes to the wrong corner. Right? Think about it. How many guys at the side of that arena look like Freddie Roach? How could you possibly go to the wrong corner at the end of a round? I'm telling you, and it's a secret to this fight, Zhou Shiming might as well have been knocked down in the third round because he's dazed and confused. He's not himself. So then we get to the fourth round. Now, fighters watching this video know what I'm talking about. The champ, Amnut Ruen Rong, is savvy. I believe he senses that Shemeng is woozy. Even though he wasn't knocked down in the third round, he was headbutted in that third round. He's woozy. So then we get the old back of the neck trick. Right? The casual fans, they're watching it. They see the guys get tangled up. Oh, guess what? Just by chance. Just by chance, the champ has a forearm during a clinch, during a tie-up on the back of Shiming's neck. I'm telling you that that drains a fighter, especially a guy who's so dazed and confused that he goes to the wrong corner at the end of the prior round. That drains a guy's stamina. Right? In fact... You'll notice throughout this fight that often when they're in close, it almost looks like Ruen Rong is jumping up to get leverage on the back of Shiming's neck. Right? So I'll just 
I'll just say this, right? He leans on the back of Shaming's neck. The announcers don't really talk about it. Shaming is dazed, confused, and weakened, in my opinion, in that fourth round. Then, of course, here's a surprise. We get to the fifth round. There's another head clash. Right? I'm just telling you, Shaming, by the way, is losing all of these rounds. Except for the second round where he gets the knockdown. On my card, he loses the first round. He loses the third round. He loses the fourth round. Right? Third round, head clash. He's not aggressive. Fourth round, you know, uh, forearm, neck. He's not aggressive. Fifth round, another head clash. Worse yet, Ruen Rong is much more charismatic than he is. Right? In the fifth round, Ruen Rong actually, and keep in mind, this is a guy with five KOs who's not being bum-rushed, who's not being pressured. He starts cocking his right hand, if you could believe this. As if this guy with five KOs is going to do major damage with it. Right? He starts cocking his right hand hand. So, all I can say is, by the time we get to the second half of this fight, the fight's over. Right? Chiming needs to change the dynamic. He needs to cut off the ring. He needs to win back the fans. He needs to let his hands go. Right? He's too tentative. He's acting like he's the one with the belt. Right? He doesn't punch hard enough to have the kind of patience that he has in the ring. What's he waiting for? The other guy to get tired so he can finish the guy off? Right? How could Ruen Rong have that much room in the ring to work with? You've got to be kidding me. I was really surprised by the timidity. That's the word I'm looking at, that Shiming had. Even when he starts chasing down Ruen Rong a little bit more in the second half of the fight, Ruen Rong is able to easily just move away, right? You understand, too, that Shiming fights too upright. He can't bend and get low. He doesn't even know how to pretend to bend and get low. He can't play to the fans at all. You have to be reminded of who the hometown fighter is. The home country fighter. Right? So, you know, it's shocking to me. Shiming is 33. This is not the mistakes being made by a young guy who's too green to know what's going on. Right? No, Shiming's a vet. Right? He's older. Then Miguel Cotto, for example, right? And he doesn't know how to play to crowds, right? He, 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 he doesn't know his situation. He, he treats a guy with five KOs as if he's a knockout artist. Hey, Shiming, you weren't fighting Canelo. Okay, you weren't fighting Johnny Gonzalez. Right? Bum rush the guy, especially later in the fight. When everyone in the arena knows you're losing the fight. Why aren't you coming in there and trying to bum rush the guy? What are you waiting for in your back foot? How could you be so far away where you're shooting a jab and the jab's not landing? Right? So I'll say this. I'm surprised by how bad Zhou Shiming did. I'm surprised, and I picked him to win the fight. So let me just say that, uh, you know, sometimes you really can't go by film. You really have to consider the fighter's understanding of his situation. And I have to concede I was not prepared for this lack of awareness by Zhou Shiming about the advantages he had fighting in Macau in front of a friendly crowd against a guy who, quite frankly, I thought had lost his last fight 
right? That McWilliams Arroyo fight, I thought, I thought Ruen Rong got a gift there. I thought that Shiming would look at that tape and would see how Arroyo's aggression led with, you know, helped him be successful at times in that fight. But, um, and I don't say this lightly, Shiming really lacks too much awareness, in my opinion, to be considered a serious threat to any crowd. I thought he had the perfect champ in front of him, right? A guy who is older than him, has less than 20 fights, right? Looked bad in his last fight, and Shiming was still too tentative early, even with a knockdown, a gift knockdown, in the second round. I was wrong on this one. Let me hear from you. I know there were several people here online who were talking up Amnat Ruen wrong before this fight. Tell us what you think he did right in this fight. Tell us what you think his future is. Tell us what you believe happened in that third round, where the two guys clash heads, and then Shemin goes to the wrong corner. Right? Let me say this too. I'll give Ruen Rong credit on this. Shimming is so predictable that there were times where Shimming did try to step up his game and step inside. And Ruen Rong would simply tie him up, turn him, get his back to the middle of the ring, and then walk away. Right? Ruen Rong is excellent at tying up an opponent. Right? I get the feeling he understands that a lot's going on in boxing other than throwing punches. Because he certainly seemed to me to be making a concerted effort to jump up on Shaming during clinches and to try to get something on the back of Shaming's head. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.